service, the wonderful preaching of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We are a Pentecostal church, hand clapping, foot stopping, tongue talking, church of the living God. So sit back and rejoice with us as we worship the Lord and in spirit and in truth. Amen. Romans chapter 6. I'm not going to hold you long tonight, I promise. You might even be out of here in a few minutes. But I want to give you what we are teaching tonight. we got a few more Wednesday nights, not too many more. We'll be done with uh, uh, the uh, God's prescribed order of victory. But let's look at verse 11 tonight. I believe that's where we're at. Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Indeed unto sin, but alive unto who? Is that what your Bible says? Yes. Alright. Through who? Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come tonight in the name of Jesus. We love you, honor you, praise you. And we thank you tonight, to God, for one more opportunity. Dear Lord, that we've got to be able to come and teach of your word tonight. Help us, to God, to rightly divide your word. And understand your word tonight, dear God. And we give you all praise. We give you all glory tonight. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We will talk tonight about faith in the cross. Amen. Faith in the cross. The Bible says, Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The phrase, likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, refers to being dead to what? What have we been teaching? What is it that is in us that should be dormant? The sin nature. This is what Paul is talking about. He's talking about the sin nature again. This probably comes closer to a formula formula than anything else found in the Word of God, at least as it regards righteous living. What we're going to come to here now is to we're going to come to knowledge and we're going to come to faith. In verses 1 through 10, as we have been teaching, Paul has represented two main facts. Those main facts was number one, the believer stands in the position of a permanent relationship of freedom regarding the sinful nature and needs not obey it. Huh? I don't obey the, the sin nature. It has no control. Come on. It's in dormant. Why? Because I placed my faith in Jesus Christ and who He is and what He did in the cross for us. Number two, that allows the divine nature, then the divine nature is imparted by which he is given both the desire and the power to do God's will. However, however, God's will can be carried out in the life of a believer only if the believer continues to exercise faith in Christ and him crucified and what he did at the cross. Amen. Come on. Which then it gives the Holy Spirit, amen, the latitude to work within our hearts and lives and brings about the desired results. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 with me tonight. And let's read verses 1 and 2. Then we're going to jump down to verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. 
Therefore, there is what? Now, this moment, the moment that you said yes to Jesus, you placed your faith in the cross. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, let me stop here. It doesn't say that you come to church on Wednesday night. It doesn't say that those who uh, 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 are in the building tonight doesn't say that you are in your car tonight. Come on. It says for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me what? Slave? Free. Free. Free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Now go down to verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by then His Spirit that dwelleth in you. In other words, because of His Spirit, not ours, but His Spirit that dwells in in you. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. That's the only way you and I can live a victorious life is by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, living it there, and allowing the Holy Spirit to work upon us. Amen. Yeah. That gives Him the latitude to work upon us. Yeah. We are trying to help God. Yeah. Let's get out of the way. He's looking for a vessel He can use. Yeah. Amen. So, this here will bring all the desired results if we do what Romans 1, 2, 11 says. Now, he said, likewise, reckon. Reckon yourself. The word reckon in the Greek means to wreck on, count, compute, to take into account. Here Paul is exhorting the saints that in their endeavor to live a life in accordance with the Word of God, they should take into account the fact that they are dead to the sin nature. Come on. That they have been disengaged from the sin nature. Come on. And it has no power over them anymore. Huh? When you hook up a trailer to the back of your vehicle and you put it on a ball and you lock that thing in and you hook up the lights, that is engaged. That is hooked up to it. That's just like the sin nature. Before we served God, we were hooked up to that. But now that I've got my faith in Jesus, the ball, the hitch has been released. It's been a pub, and I'm engaged away from it. Come on. The trailer has no control. Are you hearing me today? Amen. But too many Christians are still walking around with the with the hooked up. They're still engaged, hooked up to the sin nature. They want to say amen on Sunday morning, and as soon as they walk out, they're living like a dog. Amen. They haven't allowed the sin nature. Amen. To go toward that sin nature. Because I'm in Christ. He has no power over me no more. Amen. As long as I keep my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And Him crucified. Come on. Amen. I can't, you can't allow. Come on church. It has no power over. This is what Paul's trying to say. He's trying to tell them. They are now free from it. Amen. Amen. And can live a victorious Christian life. But again, we say only through maintaining the faith of Christ and what He did at the cross. When you and I move our faith from something else, the latitude, the Holy Spirit stops. Come on. He will only work within the parameters of, our finish, of the finished work of Christ. He says, likewise reckon also yourselves to be dead. The knowledge. This is the knowledge that we're talking about. We're talking about knowledge and faith. This is the knowledge of which we have spoken, which comes about through the teaching given by Paul in the sixth chapter 
of Romans. This knowledge propels the believer's faith. You may sit here and say, okay, knowledge of what? Well, thank you for asking. I'm going to help you. This knowledge goes back to verses 3 through 5 of this chapter. Let's flip back here. Let's read that. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 5. 3 through 5. The Bible says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So, here he's speaking of being baptized. The knowledge is being baptized into his death, buried with him by baptism into death, and raised with him in newness of life. In other words, this knowledge must center up in totality in the cross of Christ. That's why Paul said in the Corinthians, said to the Corinthians, and to us, I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. With purpose and with design, Paul did not resort to the knowledge or the philosophy of the world regarding the preaching of the gospel and that in which we believe the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified is that and that alone which will save the sinner. Amen. Set the captive free. Give the believer perpetual victory. This is the knowledge of which the apostle is speaking of. Then in verses 1 through 10, Paul has presented two main facts. First, the believer stands in the position of a permanent relationship of freedom, which we talked about, from the sinful nature and did not obey. And second, the divine nature is imparted by which he is given both the desire and the power to do God's will. We just, I just gave that to you. Second Peter 1 and, 1 and 4 says this, whereby are given unto us exceedingly, exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped, what? The corruption that is in the world through lust. This is the inner spiritual machinery God has installed within the believer's life, his Christian life. So the reckoning, the reckoning the believer must do and must continue to do harks back as stated to the cross of Christ. The cross must ever be understood as the means by which Christ gives us all things. Amen? There Jesus died and for purpose there we die with Him. Amen? Come on. When you place your faith and leave it in there that is the means by which Christ gives us all things he said he would give us our heart's desire huh come on I've been talking about it for a few weeks few months sister Angel and I are in the process we're working on it on a hunting shack on wheels <laughs> and I've been looking and wanting to get some siding to put on it don't have the money to buy it. But I know somebody who knows somebody <laughs> amen, that knows who can get it for you. Amen. So we've been going to that person saying, hey, we need some siding. So I just happened to look on the marketplace and somebody had a whole bunch of it. Free. I love free stuff. <laughs> so, her and I took a trip yesterday on the good old gospel ship. 
sail world far beyond the skies. And we got every bit of it that was usable. And I got more than enough. So if anybody needs some now, I've got it. And it's free. Huh? Come on. Why? You may say, well, that's good now all that. God said he'd give your even your heart's desires. If I will place my faith and trust in him, huh? Well, and you just happen to look on there. No? You can believe whatever you want. I thank God every sheet I put on there, full sheet I put on that truck and my wife put on there, we were thanking God. Amen. 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 Come on. God will supply. Amen. Listen to me, church. This is the knowledge that we know of. Because if we place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the cross of Christ, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in this, He'll bring it to our attention Amen. where there's free sighting. Hey, come on. I'm shouting whether you want to shout with me or not. But when the winter time comes, and I'm out there with my wife, we're hunting. We're going to be in there where it's warm. Amen. Hallelujah. And God, we're going to pray, God, bring that little animal beside us. Come on, let's food for the table. Amen. Hello? Hmm. Reckoning. There Jesus died. Amen. The cross must ever be understood as the means by which Christ gives us all things. Huh? Now, he said, likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead. Dead indeed unto sin. Dead unto the sin nature. This is what he's talking about. Due to what Christ did at the cross, the believer is first of all to reckon himself to be dead to the sin nature. Come on. He remains dead to the sin nature by continuing to maintain faith in Christ and what Christ did at the cross. Which in fact, he said, he, he said to us in verse 10, the believer is to do this on a daily basis. A daily basis. Luke 9, 23 and 24. Luke 9, 23 and 24 says, And he said unto them, If any man will come after me, do what? Let him deny himself and take up what? His cross. his cross daily and do what? Follow, Follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall what? Lose, lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Amen? If one thinks that we talk too much or bring about too much of the cross, then my answer to that is that it's impossible impossible for one to make too much of the cross. Amen. Amen? The truth is one would think that too much is made of the cross if one doesn't understand what was done at the cross. And in fact, that is, it was done no place else. Everything we need. Come on. If you need something, Jesus paid for it at the cross. Amen? Amen? So, the word reckon is where faith comes in. Due to that, due to what Christ did at the cross, our faith is ever to rest in that finished work. In other words, we are to make the cross of Christ the object of our faith and that it never change. Don't ever let it change. He says we are alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, come on, church. Two, three, two things are said here in this verse. They are, first of all, as stated, we are to ever reckon ourselves and by virtue of the cross to be dead unto what? The sin nature. Number two, we are so also to reckon ourselves to be alive to God. As through Jesus Christ our Lord. Which refers to what he did at the, for us at the cross. Now, if the believer doesn't look to Christ 
If you and I don't look to Christ in the cross, and Christ in the cross exclusively, failure is certain. Come on. Which means a revival of the sin nature. Which means that the believer then comes under bondage to the old nature, which we'll, we will deal with in the next few verses coming up. We, are, we have three things at work here. And they are, number one, the cross of Christ. This is given to us in verses 3 through 5, which we read. Our faith, number two. The cross of Christ must ever be the object of our faith. And that according to this 11th verse. Number three, the Holy Spirit. Paul doesn't deal with the Holy Spirit in the second, uh, sixth chapter of Romans, reserving that for the eighth chapter. Someone has said that the sixth chapter of Romans presents to us the mechanics of the Holy Spirit while the 8th chapter presents to us the dynamics of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the 6th chapter tells us how the Holy Spirit does what He does, which is through the cross. Ever working within those parameters, while the 8th while, while chapter tells us what He does. So go back and read 8. After you read 6 again, read 8. You'll understand what I'm saying here, that how uh, to us the Holy Spirit does what He does in the 6th chapter, which is through the cross, ever working within the parameters, while the 8th chapter tells us what He does after we have, after we learn how He does it. Come on. you got to learn how He does it before you know what He does. Come on. He does it. Thus, knowledge propels the believer's faith. Come on. Let me close. The believer is also to take into account, take into account that he is alive to God. That is that the divine nature has been imparted within the result, with the result that this nature gives him both the desire and the power to regulate his life in accordance with the Word of God. Amen. Now reckoning oneself to the sin nature and alive to God does not make one so. In other words, the mere fact of saying this or even repeating it over and over affects no positive results within itself. One must have a working knowledge. Working knowledge of what Jesus has done for us. We must understand that a part of this great work was to give us dominion over the sin nature in our everyday lives. Not just on Sunday nights, not on Sunday mornings, but every day of our lives. That is what brings the victory. Huh? Jesus didn't say, oh, let, uh, let me, uh, I don't want to get him so. A reckoning in this manner becomes very profitable. And because it gives the Holy Spirit an attitude to work in, one life, in one's life again. Again, what did Jesus say? If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross Sunday mornings only. Sunday nights only. How about Wednesday nights? We're not supposed to take it up on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and Fridays, and Saturdays. Oh, we're supposed to do it daily? Then what's the problem? We should have no problem then. If our faith is in Jesus, what He did at the cross, allowing the Holy Spirit to have latitude to work in our lives, and we're taking up our cross daily and following Him. Come on. We ought to be better than we are. Come on, church. But it's not God's fault. not my fault. It's everybody's fault. Why I don't have a, a greater relationship with Christ is because all your people's faults. No, it's not. It's my own fault. And the walk that you have with the Lord is not my fault. 
It's your fault. Same with mine. Huh? We have no problem pointing the finger. Nobody has a problem pointing the finger. It's your fault, your problem, you, you're the one. No. But we have a problem looking in the mirror. Because when we look in the mirror, that's the problem right there. Amen. So, what I'm trying to help you tonight that as long as your faith is in the cross, amen, leave it there. And allow the Holy Spirit to work in your lives. But when you and I take our faith out of the cross, the Holy Spirit stops. Come on. He's there to lead us and guide us. I'm still putting that message together. That I came across somebody had it one time and I read it somewhere. About can't even think how it goes now. God's not going to pay your rent if you're shacking up with the devil. Hello? And there's a lot of people shacking up with the devil, not realizing it, and wondering why God ain't blessing. God's not going to pay you rent if you're shacking up with the devil. Amen? So, I'll preach at one of the times. One of the things I'll get it, I'll get it together. Lord, the Lord gives me a little bit. I love that the scripture says precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. Amen. See, God will give me something, I'll put it down on that paper, then He'll give me nothing. And I have to wait. Because He knows when He needs to be preached, I know. So, as long as you keep your faith in Jesus Christ, Amen. Come on. Now, let me say something. As I was listening today to the word of uh, the study of the uh, 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 of the word of God, they were talking about something that's very so true. See, the, the God's God spoke of it in the Bible of an ignorant sin. Sins that sometimes we commit that we don't even know we're doing. And that's where He paid for the price on the cross, my past, present, and future sins. But if I go out here and sin willfully, the Bible said I must confess my sin before the Lord. But if I do something that I don't realize I'm doing, That's where Jesus is paid for it at the cross. Because my faith is in Him. Alright? If that's not the case, then we're all doomed for hell. But if I do make a mistake, and I know I did, I have, yes, I have an advent with the Father where I can go to Him directly and say, Lord, forgive me. Because the Bible says if you confess with your mouth, the Lord is faithful to re forgive. Amen. 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 But if I'm out here and I do something I don't realize it, it's unpleasing to God. But later God will bring some things to your huh? Come on. So you know we get hooked up on this. Once saved, always saved. Garbage. I believe you can stay saved, but you can also backslide. And this faith doctrine that you don't have to pray to be healed because Jesus already paid for it. And why did He say He asked, told us to keep asking and seeking and knocking at His door? Is that just because one of these days He's going to let us in? No. You got something, ask him. Amen. If he don't give it to you today, keep seeking his face. Yes. And keep knocking at his door. Yes. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Amen. Amen. 
So this once, all you gotta do is pray one time. Yes, God hears you. Yes, God knows our prayer. But I keep going back and asking. I see my brother back, yes, he knows the heart. Huh? If you if you're going to truly keep asking him. But if I keep my faith, well, this is what I'm trying to say. You keep your faith in Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to work. Huh? It's up to us. Amen. God's not gonna, He's not, He's not gonna smack you over the head. He likes you sometimes. The Bible even said he liked to write. He wrote eagle bog above their heads. God even repented for ever making me. But if you keep your faith in Jesus, come on, that's the key. If you keep your faith in Jesus, likewise reckon you also a knowledge, get the knowledge, also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have the knowledge. We have the faith. Huh? This is why we're going to live a victorious life. If we understand, that's what we're trying to teach. The book of Romans chapter 6. God's prescribed order of victory. Amen. I want victory. I don't know how about you. I do. And it's only through Jesus Christ. Well, we pray that you truly enjoyed that worship service and the wonderful preaching that we bring to you. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The message of the cross. But I'd like to ask you a question. If there's any doubt at all in yourself whether you would die today that you could, would meet Jesus in heaven. I would like to say this little sinner prayer with you and have you repeat it with me today if you would. It's just words, but if you will say it and mean it from your heart, you will have no doubt after you say this. So just say this with me this today, if you would, please. Repeat it after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today asking you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe Jesus suffered and died and rose again for all. I am accepting Jesus Christ into my heart to cleanse me and make me whole. And now, by faith, I believe I am saved. Amen. If you said that little simple little prayer, Hey, angels in heaven today are rejoicing. But we would like to let you know that if you have any prayer requests at all, that you can go onto our website, victoryinthecross.org, and go to the place where it says prayer request. Or if you have anything at all you'd like for us to, to pray about or you want to share with us, go on there and we will definitely find it and read it and we'll pray about it with you. So, again, I pray that you enjoyed this, and we hope to see you again the next time we come back to you. God bless you, and thank you very much.